In the world of politics, as many predicted, 2020 is off to a busy start. While Arizona's capital is abuzz with a new legislative session, on Capitol Hill, all eyes are on the president's impeachment trial. Plus, congressional leaders Martha McSally and Ann Kirkpatrick also found themselves in the national spotlight. We explored these issues and more with local journalist Tucson Sentinel publisher Dylan Smith and Arizona Daily Star opinion writer Edward Celaya. First impressions as we head into a new legislative session, what's going to be the headline? I, for me, I think the headline is going to be that uh, obviously uh, with the prisons taking up about 10 percent of the state's budget, um, there's a whole suite of Democratic uh, proposed bills out there to kind of address that. Um, but kind of like we were saying beforehand, those those bills are going to have to go before even if they do pass through to to Governor Ducey. Um, and they might not be going anywhere. So what's going to happen with this 10 percent that keeps being eaten out of the budget? Um, that's that's kind of the big story for me. Uh, is there going to be any movement on that? Anything to fix it? So the other big unanswered question as far as the budget goes, which is the most important thing that the legislature tackles every year, is what sort of steps are we going to take for the future for our education system in the state? You know, we're, we've uh, had uh, a couple of years of some, uh, you know, not insignificant raises for teachers, but uh, school districts are still really very much pressured across the, all, all over Arizona, especially uh, in, in places that can't afford significant budget overrides. So what are we going to do to, you know, uh, give more support to education systems that are uh, really uh, pressured right now? That famous 20 by 2020, this is the last year, so what's going to come in the years it, to follow? Exactly. That's the question. All right. Let's move on to, um, we're going to have an election this year. It's going to be a memorable one. Yeah. Let's focus for a moment, though, on Senator Martha McSally, who took some heat for comments that she made last week and also Representative Ann Kirkpatrick who disclosed to the public that she's um, managing um, a very personal crisis right now. Mm -hmm. What do we make of Senator McSally and the comments that she made about a certain CNN reporter? I know that some people have been saying that it might have been coordinated or that she was kind of waiting in the wings for something like this. I'm not sure if her, her initial response was, but I think everything that came after that it really has been the putting the uh, shirts out there with liberal hack. Um, I think there's mugs now and everything. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's two, it's a, serves a twofold purpose. Number one, uh, to raise some much needed cash. Uh, the fourth quarter uh, uh, just came out and she's, she raised $2 million less than Mr. Mark Kelly. Um, and then another thing is to kind of shore up her support from the right. I know that she'll be facing a primary challenge now. How serious that challenge will be is really to be questioned, but um, this, for me, really looks like it was a, a way for her to tie her star to the president, and she thinks that I believe that that will help her in this upcoming election. She was always there for us, and she's tough, and she's smart, and she's brave, and she can fly an airplane better than anybody. It, it seemed pretty pre-planned to me. Yeah. Uh, McSally <laughs> repeated her uh, key line twice. She had somebody there filming it herself. They had a website up within an hour. That's, uh, you know, pretty, pretty quick. Uh, even if it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, staged, uh, doubling down on that kind of stunt doesn't help her with uh, folks in the middle that she needs to attract to actually win a Senate election this time. Representative Kirkpatrick, uh, uh, very public now with a personal crisis that she's having with um, an addiction. What do we make of any candidates who will come forward and try to challenge her in the primary? How serious might they be? I think f if we're talking from her left, I, I really don't know if there's much of a, a, a soft spot to attack here. Um, however, from her right, although I don't see anybody with maybe the name recognition or the, the the sort of resume of as a Martha McSally, I think what this does is makes her a little bit softer and kind of easier to attack. Um, now, maybe not for the issue of what she's, you know, going to have some help on for, for her alcoholism, but I think overall this goes towards speaking towards her character. And that's something that now, while it might not have been brought up before this incident, now it's something that has she's opened herself up to. As far as the primary goes, a potential primary from uh, you know a challenger who might have a chance uh, we're looking at a pretty narrow window here and it would be hard to justify 
right at this moment, you know, uh, making a serious Democratic primary challenge to Kirkpatrick, just because she hasn't been not at work for that long. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we don't know is how long she won't be uh, participating actively in, uh, in the House, you know, not being able to show up and vote mm -hmm. because of uh, getting treatment. Mm -hmm. And if that goes on, that, you know, some momentum might be, uh, you know, uh, build towards somebody else jumping into that. But the window to actually do that and build a, you know, a credible, effective campaign is uh, pretty short. You have to, you know, declare and find supporters and find some money and get that going in pretty short order. And if you don't do that by the middle of the spring, it's not going to happen. Under this very large political umbrella, we also have an impeachment. We have an Arizona or Representative um, Debbie Lesko, who was named to President Trump's impeachment team. What sort of energy and attention does that bring to Arizona, given that many people have dubbed this a battleground state? I'm not so sure how much energy it brings to the actual state. I think that for those that are uh, already supporters of uh, Congresswoman Lesko. Uh, this is just another kind of feather in her cap, something that she'll be able to point back to. Um, I think she's she's in a fairly safe district, so this isn't something that I think that will, will hurt her in the long run. That would be the energy I would be concerned about if I were her. Um, but ultimately, I think it was kind of a reward from the Trump administration to a, a person in Congress that they felt was doing a good job kind of carrying the water for the administration. All right, um, before we go, I want to talk about something that is always uh, a hot topic here, mm -hmm. is how the press is sort of revered right now given the political climate. Mm -hmm. Anything that the Arizona Daily Star is doing, the Tucson Sentinel, that you're having conversations behind closed doors saying we want to be sure that people don't question our motives or accuse us of not being fair. Basically, not just during the 10 years of TucsonSentinel.com, but in my journalism before that, uh, every news organization I've ever worked with has been accused by somebody of not being fair. That just comes with the territory, and some people are a little bit louder about it now, but uh, you know, pretty much every day we have people on the left saying we're not fair, and on the right saying we're not fair, and you know, sometimes the facts just don't support a particular opinion. And, it's our job to provide people with the truth, to bring them facts that are demonstrable, that you, you can show them how you know them, mm -hmm. rather than just uh, you know, present an argument to back up a, a specific case. We're not out there to support a leftist point of view or a right-wing point of view. We're just there to inform people. A lot of the letters to the editor, you know, question the star and mm -hmm. its motives. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, some people will say, will they publish my letter? Maybe I don't sound as educated. But then there's also a fair amount of people who say that you won't publish because you may not agree with their political ideology. Can you clarify right now what the goal is of the opinion section? Our goal is to facilitate a community conversation. Now. Obviously, Tucson is a pretty liberal town, so we receive mostly liberal letter, letters to the editor and op-eds. However, there are plenty of conservatives that we also hear from, and recently we've made the change to where uh, if folks write in once a month, we would only publish their letters. Now we've tried to make it so that it's a little bit more uh, politically kind of, um, there's a little bit more parity there. Uh, and by doing so, we think we're we're doing a better job of letting folks know that the different kind of opinions out there in the community uh, and exposing them to things that perhaps they wouldn't be exposed to if they were just speaking in their own social circles. I think one other thing that maybe kind of gets lost too at the Daily Star is a lot of people see what's published in print. We publish just about every letter online that we receive as well. Liberal, conservative, libertarian, pink, blue, red, Whatever it is, we, we try to publish everything that we receive online. Okay, yeah. and to be clear, we both, we, all three of us agree it's gonna be one heck of a year ahead. My <laughs> thanks to both of you. Thank you.